welcome, hello, if you're new to the uh, the channel. What we're doing today is uh, we're talking about the uh, Critical Role Challenger decks. Um, I'm going to go through card by card for both the Vox Machina and the Mighty Nine Challenger decks. And uh, I'm going to get my opinions, I'm going to get your opinions, and... and do, do, let's sit down, let's talk about them, right? Now, how they're going to affect the game of universes as a whole. Um, so, without further ado, let's get rocking. All right, so first and foremost, we have Vexalion, Cunning Thief, 722. Uh, seven hand size, 22 health, has the air, death, and, oh, I should do this. Boop. Nice. Um... Your range or weapon attack gets plus three speed, and it gets my uh, your range or weapon attack is plus three speed, period. Just does it, and then it gets minus one speed for each other attack in your card pool. And so, the first attack gets three speed, second attack gets two speed, third attack gets one speed, so on and so forth. Uh, actually, yeah, that's how it works three, two, one. And then, if you play more than that, they start getting no speed, and then you just don't press fifth button. Form commit. So you turn your character sideways, commit a foundation, turn it sideways. Your rival loses one health for each attack in your card pool. Clear one card from your card pool. It clears. Um, I think that this card is very, very good. Is the poll not working? You guys aren't feeling a poll. That's okay. Um, I think this card's very, very good. Uh, I think the fact that there are ranged uh, and weapon attacks under all three of these symbols that go insane. And this form commit is essentially an extra attack that you can play. It's just a bonus one. I think this guy's very, very strong. But we have to go look at his sister. We've got Vexalia, Resourceful Hunter. 629 has all earth and life. Before the game begins, search your deck for a one copy of Mark Your Prey and put it in your discard pile period the first copy of mark your play mark your prey you play each turn does not count towards progressive difficulty period response at the start of your combat phase add a copy of mark your prey from discard pile to your hand so you just pick it up Whoop. and then enhance commit so turn this character sideways your next ranged weapon attack you try to play ignores progressive and it gets plus three damage so here's the biggest uh relation that i have to this is this character is um, for, for my old My Hero heads, a combination of the uh, of Tokoyami and Eraserhead. Hey, before the game begins, I put the action I care about in my discard pile, and then every turn I go and pick that action up. It's very, very strong. Not quite as versatile as either of those characters, but every turn you're going to be playing Mark, Mark Your Prey, and it doesn't count as progressive difficulty. I think that being a pseudo seven hand size character or making all my moves, and we're going to see Mark Your Prey here very soon. Um, make all my moves get really big, and then she gets to to commit herself to play one last one and and go for that that kill shot with the plus three damage. I, I think it's I think the character is very very good. Um, I'm excited to play this character, but it's all off the back of how good is Mark Your Prey. Uh, three five two high block has uh, uh, Vex's symbols ranged spell. Um, this card. Um, uh, is the first card that we're seeing that has the spell keyword in the entire game, which is very cool. New, new, brand new keyword. While this card is your card pool, your ranged and special weapon attacks get plus one speed. Enhance your attack, your rival flips one foundation. So from your hand, you're going to take this blue action card, put it in your card pool, and they're going to selectively flip one. And then while it's existing in your card pool, your moves are going to get plus one speed. And then enhance card pool, mill one. If you milled an attack this way, your range attack gets three damage. Otherwise, it gets plus one damage. So it is, I get to mill one card on every single one of my attacks, and it gets a speed and a damage. It's essentially summon dark shadow without turning the card sideways. So as we take and we uh, and we look at Vex, right? Like, she says that I put this card on my... When I, when I play the enhance on uh, marker prey to make them flip a foundation, because I added it to my hand with Vex... All my moves get plus one, plus one, and then my, uh, and maybe even plus one, plus three, which is incredible. And then the last one that I play gets that plus three at the end, um, which is like super good. Very, very much telegraphing the fact of like, I'm not going to be playing anymore. I think that this character, just like these two card combinations, is very strong. It's like so, so good. Plus one, plus one on everything is awesome. Plus one and accidentally plus three is incredible. It's, it's very, very strong. Up next, we're going to look at the asset, the singular asset that comes inside of the deck, and that is Trinket, uh, 2 5 2 low block. <coughs> Has the ally symbol or ally keyword and unique keyword, which means you can only have one of it on the, the 
in your stage at a time. Enhance, add this card to your card pool colon. This attack gets plus four damage. Push it up, move gets big. And then enhance, add this card to your card pool colon. This attack gets minus four damage. If your character is Vexalia, um, add this card to your hand after this attack resolves. Um, so on one attack, you can take on defense, right? We'll talk about the bottom enhance. You push it up into the card pool for minus four, and then you pick up a, a two low block that you can block with, with Trinket afterwards. Um, or if you're just trying to get the job done, you're just trying to, to kill them, you just hey, this one gets plus four damage. Pretty good when you can accidentally give plus three with Mark Your Prey and another plus three with, with Vex. Um, I think Trinket is pretty good. I think the biggest issue with Trinket is like finding room in the deck. As soon as as soon as you have to try and find room to play the card, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a little, little difficult. Um, but we'll just have to see. We'll move on to our first attack card. Um, arrows and daggers. Five three two mid block ally range weapon has the air, uh, death and life symbols. Uh, four low for five. Enhance. Discard a card from your hand. If you have three or more attacks in your card pool, destroy one rival foundation. So, um, Vax wanting to play a multitude of cards in his string, Vex being able to play Arrows and Daggers very free at the end of a string, and give it just a bunch of extra damage, and so, and d selectively destroying one of my rival foundations. This is very, very strong. And then we have a uh, Vax response, so only playable if your character is Vax. If this attack deals damage, your next weapon attack, you try to play this turn ignores progressive, meaning that his string plays are that much stronger. And then a Vex Enhance of this deck gets one speed for each attack in your card pool. So the stronger, the, the later in the chain that you can play this, um, the, the better it is, right? It'll get plus three from, from Vex and then um, uh, get speed for each weapon already in there, uh, or each attack already in there. And then uh, Vax says that um, it's better to commit bonus cards. It's pretty strong. Pretty strong. I like this card just a lot. Uh, dagger, Dagger, Dagger. One of the uh, ultra rares inside of the kit it is a six difficulty, three check, two low block range weapon. Has all of a uh, uh, has as uh, air, death, water. While this card is in your card pool, um, each of your attacks with dagger or daggers in its name get minus one difficulty. So if you lead with dagger, 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 it essentially doesn't count towards progressive because they all get cheaper to play. And then enhance spend one momentum, which is a resource we have in the game. Add a card with dagger or daggers in its name, not named dagger, dagger, dagger from discard pile, uh, or your momentum to your hand. So you show them, hey, it's from my discard pile. Hey, this one has it. From my momentum, this one has it. So spend a momentum, grab an attack. Um, pretty good when this card says that my other ones are now cheaper to play. Um, it essentially doesn't doesn't count as progressive. And like like this is a six diff, six eye for six that goes and finds another move. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, up next, we have Fiery Dagger Flourish. 4-3, 2 high block, 4 mid for 4. Enhance, colon, if this attack deals damage, destroy one committed rival foundation. Um, ranged weapon, has all of his symbols. Um, I think this card is very good. But I think that we've already seen two of the three attacks we've shown just say destroy a foundation, which is, like, just a really strong thing to do, truthfully. Especially if, like, Fiery Dagger, Dagger Flourish is just the first move that you play. It's just a 7 for 4 that if it hits, then they destroy one, right? And you could play more of these, right? Like, imagine my opponent has two committed foundations because they're trying to block my things, and I just go flourish, flourish, destroy, destroy. Um, it's very easy to get ahead of my opponent if I start destroying their their foundations, even if it is committed, right? It's 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 very very good. Um, this card makes me excited to bring tr try and bring back like destroy foundation tribal. Like I want to play a ton of ton of destruction abilities. I want to do that badly. Up next, we've got flaming arrow four three one high block five mid for three has the powerful three enhance. Um, this card's incredible in her. As long as you can find a bunch of momentum, she can play this super late. It gets uh, uh, fast. It gets big. Um, sometimes, like like if we have Hunter's Mark, right? Um, sometimes this is, sorry, a 6-4-6-4 six, four, six, four diff with a one high block. This is just a very good card in her. It's incredible in, in her. Is it going to be see play anywhere else? No, probably not. Unless these keywords are relevant. Range, spell, weapon. Um, 
powerful three you can find on a ton of stuff. You can find on a ton of stuff. So blank card, but pretty good, pretty decent in her. Uh, up next, we've got Piercing Dagger Strike. Um, uh, four, three, two mid block, three mid for five stun one, which means they commit a foundation. Pretty good tactic to use with Dagger Flourish, but otherwise, it's fine. This card's not very good. Um, it's just like, like if it's the first move that you play, right? It's a six mid for five with stun one, which is neat. And then this is the next move that you play, and it's a six mid for four. That if it t deals, you destroy that stun foundation. So, like, there's tactics there. This card's not going to be played. Unlike Flaming uh, flaming Arrow, which I think can see play in, in Vex, Vax isn't going to play this, and I don't think anybody else is either. Up next, we have one of my favorite cards in the, in the whole kit. We've got Storm of Arrows. 5-3, uh, 2 mid block, 4 high for 5. Echo, ranged... Uh, a weapon spell you may spend ranged weapon attacks from your card pool as though they were momentum to pay for this attack's equability so it has to have both ranged and weapon see now the chat comes alive we were, don't care about anything else we care about this so this one's the good one you may spend ranged weapon attacks from your card pool as though they were momentum to pay for this attack's equability so it clears your card out of your card pool if you have another uh, ranged weapon and then keep going so this card feels feels very cool to um you play an attack you hunter's mark you use um uh, uh vex to play sort of arrows on a five you then use sort of arrows to clear the first attack that you played to then play it on a five and they're all getting really really big um i think this card is very strong it's fun to jester too we're not there yet <laughs> but i'm sure it's very fun to jester uh, I believe this is the last attack in the deck. It is a Venomous Dagger Slash. 5-3, three, 3 low for 5 with a 1 low block. After this card leaves your card pool during the combat phase, your rival loses 1 health, period. It just happens. Um, the best target for Vex to clear his... Uh, sorry, uh, for Vex to clear uh, his card pool with. Um, just incredible. Just great. Um... Is he going to see play? Uncertain, right? So, like, the best thing that you can do would be, like, play daggers, 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 play this, play a third attack. You, well, it's, isn't, isn't, wait, he might be a form? He is a form clear? He's a form clear. It's interesting. I guess it is, like, a bonus damage when I do the clear, so it's like I burn you for two. Like you lose two health, I guess. I don't know. This one, this one is is not is not for me. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, all of the foundations. Uh, a mother's embrace. Uh, one five three low block response. Tenacious flip colon. After you clear a card from your card pool during the combat phase, ready this card. So clearing a card is like a really specific trigger. It is not having the card be removed or if it's being spent for a uh, uh, cost or whatever. It is. It is truly. It is cleared. That's a, that's a, a verb in our game, um, which means to put it from the card pool into the discard pile. I think this card is very cool. I think this card is very neat. Being able to re-ready foundations is, is very awesome. It essentially says that the form on uh, Vax is free. Form commit, commit a foundation. We just commit this one. And then we just get to re-ready it back because we cleared a card out of out of the pool. Um, good synergy, good tactic. Uh, a trinket for Vex, two five two mid block. Enhance flip your attack gets two damage. If you have an ally card in your stage, it gets three damage instead. Obviously, pretty good whenever you've got trinket. Enhance remove spend a momentum. Build one copy of trinket from disco pile. So just put it right in your right in your thing. Broken pole, you guys were using it. it's fine. Um, build trinket out of your discard pile is very good. It is a good. I think. I think this this card in Vex specifically is being able to spend a momentum, remove the foundation to get minus four damage, and um, uh, and draw a low block on the next attack. Right, can be pretty life saving there, as well as just like if you've got two of these, a trinket for Vex, 
you build in trinket and then flip it gets plus three damage it's good good card um up next we've got class membership you guys want the pullback i'll, pull, I'll bring the pullback killing me this for class clasp membership zero five three high block response flip after you partially block an attack gain two health so this card is very good for a zero diff after you partially block an attack gain two health it essentially it essentially says minus four damage on a zero diff as long as you have the health to pay right you take in you block a move let's pretend it's a six damage move right it's a six damage move and so you'll take three because of the partial and then you gain two back so you took one overall so you, you actually you actually is minus five damage right um i think this card is very strong um and it works in duplicates right like you can if you're if you've lost four health and you partial block you just flip two of them and it's gained four back it's very good Up next, we've got Dragon Lore Expert 153 mid block. Enhance commit. This deck gets minus two speed. If it has the death or fire symbol, it gets a minus one damage. Um This is fine. It's, it's fine. I don't think it's I don't think it's anything crazy to write home about. But enhance one diff enhance commit for minus two speed, possibly minus one damage. It's fine. It's fine. Um I think that abilities like this are very good, and I think you should be you should be playing. Um, cards that say enhance commit for minus two speed. Um, our dragon doesn't have those symbols. Uh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. The, the Ryukyu, that's very, very funny. Um, in fact, she gets to play this on two of her symbols. She's the dragon lore expert. Um, this card is fine. It's just like kind of... It's like a staple in all of these uh, clash decks that needs to exist. A commit for minus two speed just needs to exist. Up next, we have Elvish Tutoring, 2-5, two, 2 mid block. Vox Machina Enhance, which means if it has, um, or your character has to have the Vox, Vox Machina trait. Um, flip, commit, search your deck for one attack, reveal it, shuffle your deck, and then put it on top of your deck. Incredible if you have any amount of draw power. Any amount of draw power, I, I just want to go find the best card in my deck and go put it on top. Um, this, at the moment, is like the best reason to play these characters. Is I have a, a card that's going to kill you. I would like to play it. I've got Elvish Tutoring. This card is incredible. This card's so, so good. It's very, very strong. Um, yeah, it's great. Super good. The tutor has tutored his name. Is this MTG now? Uh, it is. Yeah, it's a D and, it's a D, &D show. <laughs> Up next, uh, we've got Flirting and Flattery. Um, one, five, three high block response flip. After your end phase begins, draw one card, period. If you played one or more attacks this turn, discard a card. So I like this card a lot because it's dual purpose, right? If I have played attack cards on this turn, I get to take and, um, I get to take and find good blocks at the end of my turn. If it's a defensive building turn, I build out my hand, I flip, and I then redraw blocks, and I don't have to discard cards. I think this card, if you are looking for um, one diff, five check, high blocks, this card is not a bad option under these three symbols, truthfully. If you are looking for high blocks, this is a pretty good one. Uh, up next, my favorite card in these decks, Prank War. Uh, two, six, three mid block, response, tenacious, destroy, colon. After I have a flip the foundation as a cost, destroy it. If you flip a ready foundation, I will destroy my committed foundation to break it. That's very good. That's very good in a world where we have more foundation destruction. I'm punishing you severely for playing the game. And this is a six check. Um, I think this card has a lot of a lot of good uses. Um, especially with the ability for, under a lot of symbols, to unflip foundations, right? I've been playing against Ochako 4 for a while. I played as Ochako 4, and I got my provisional win with it. Um, this card says that Ochako 4 doesn't get to reuse her very, very powerful, very potent, strong flip abilities. I love it. It's very good. Up next, we've got Shameless Haggler. 
It's a 2 5 2 low block. Enhance flip, discard a card, colon, draw a card, and gain 2 health, period. Then your rival may draw a card and gain 2 health. If they do, draw a card and gain 2 health. So, flip discard to redraw and gain 2. I can gift my opponent a card and 2 health. If I do, I draw a card and gain 2 health. What incredibly awesome choices this card gives your rival. Hey, I'm doing the thing once. Do you want to do the thing to maybe like find another block? If so, I get to do the thing too. It's really cool. Um, it's a really cool option on defense, truly, because yes, I have I draw I I, I discard and then redraw, right, and then I get my two. But then I look at them and go, hey, I'll give you an extra card for you to, to try and kill me. You gain a little health for it. If you do. I'll get a drop bonus as well. Thoughts? 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 I think this card is super, super red. Um, I'm excited to see if I can find room for a 2-5-2 two, two low block in my deck. And it's on Recovery Girl Summons? Yeah, Recovery Girl's got this one. Um, I like the fact that it's like not like a flip commit. I don't know. I, I like this card a lot. I think, it's, I think it's very cool. I'm excited to know if I have room for it. Up next... We've got Twins Bond. It is a 2-4-3 low block. Enhance your turn. Remove. Choose one card from each player's card pool and clear it. If the chosen cards share a card type, your attack gets plus one speed and plus one damage. So, I think this card is going to suffer from... <clears throat> this card's going to suffer from all of the rem remove a ready card to clear a card out of my card pool cards is that like it's really good on huge strings that my opponent probably was gonna die anyways on removing cards from your card pool is very good but the fact that this says remove this from the game stinks and that they that the damage and speed pump is not very big it's not very good and, tr and truthfully the worst part about this card is that it's a four but maybe it's good enough maybe I, I I don't know. I, this one this one is a little tough for me. And then my last one for this deck is three four two high block form. So not during an attack on your turn. Remove, draw two cards. Period. You cannot play foundations for the rest of this turn. This is worth the three four. <clears throat> this is worth the three four. This doesn't have the unique keyword, so you can play play out this massive stage and then go venture, 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 and draw six cards and go, I found the attacks I'm going to kill you with. The issue is, is that you cannot stabilize after you're done. And so if you whiff on your venture fourth, you're stuck with those cards. You're just stuck with them. And that's the that's the big question. The other idea, the other tactic or strategy, or the other the other thing that you can do with this is you play out your big long attack string, you build two foundations, and as the last thing you do on your turn, you venture forth and you draw your two cards and say, I'll pass and I drew two blocks. Good. Very, very cool. Um, destroy, remove already at form speed, so it's very tough to cancel. I can't, um, I'm going to uh, have cool stuff. I'm going to draw some blocks. It's cool. So my question for you guys is, do you like the deck? What are your thoughts on Vex and Vex? I'm of the opinion that I like what I like what Vex is doing. I'm going to see how hard I can break Vex. I'm going to see, can I, can I do... A, a bunch, a bunch of damage with Vex. I get a bunch of speed. I burn you for a ton. I'm a fan of what it is, what is going on. Um, what's going on with the with the decks? I like most of the attacks. Right, arrows and daggers, incredible card. Dagger, 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 great. Um, Storm of arrows, incredible. Some of the other cards, I'm not in love with. Right. 
if Marker Prey had some protection, I would be down. What do you mean protection? Are you ju you're you're just afraid of the uh, of the Toga card, so just remove it. I just like I'm not sure unless you're playing as Vax, how many people are going to be playing that card truthfully, right? Like it's just Toga and him, that's it, right? Doesn't stop it it uh, getting from removed. I mean, Eraser had that same problem, right? Tokoyami had that same problem. They could just remove those actions, and those cards, those characters were great. Those characters were super good. And also, like, they have to play four copies of them, which with uh, Dagger, 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 it's very, very easy to just go pick up that card every turn, especially if you have the momentum to spend it on, right? But I think, I think that Arrows and Daggers is going to be a cracked card in these characters. It's going to be very, very good. And I think that Mark Your Prey Vex is a strong deck. Just giving plus one, plus one, possibly plus one, plus three to all of your moves every turn. And then the last one is free and it gets big when they've blocked everything because you've marked your prey a ton. I think it's going to all come down to like what what block uh, do, does my opponent have enough blocks for what what Vex is doing. And then, man, the fact that this form is allowed to kill you is kind of messed up. It's kind of crazy this card's allowed to kill you. Your rival loses the health for each attack in your card pool, period. Clear one card from your card pool. It's really good. It's really, really good, guys. And you get to just like that's not a cost as long as you have found a mother's embrace. You just get to re-ready the right re-ready this. So for every time that you have mother's embrace, it's just form burn my opponent for three. Clear a card. I want to play Vax. I want to build him with a lot of Toga's attacks that make my opponent lose life and have him. Yeah, I think there's no reason for it not to be. But, YouTube, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Um, make sure you check out the uh, Mighty Nine deck that we're going to be uh, talking about here on the channel. Um, but with that, I wish you well.